One of the biggest problems we have every year is turn-in. Turn-in is actually really simple, but it gets complicated because people rush at the very end and make simple mistakes. They don't check their work, or sometimes they just didn't click the right button or setting. Uh, we need to focus on making sure turn-in goes smooth this year. What I need you to do is simply pretend that turn-in is at midnight on Saturday. That way, you try to get everything done by midnight. And if you need to get up the next morning and fix something, you've got a little bit more time. Turn-in is from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. At 4 o'clock, we close the doors. If you get there at 4.05 or 4.10, you're late. Your film will still get screened, but it will be disqualified from cash, prizes, and awards. Now, you have a deadline. Jay Galantine, a friend of mine, once said, no edit is ever finished. It's simply abandoned. And what you need to figure out is at what point you need to abandon the edit and switch over to compression and export. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to edit your film. That's all up to you. But what I can tell you is that there are basically two different kinds of codecs. There's a capture codec and there's an edit codec. The capture codec, like H.264 or MPEG-4, is meant to be highly compressed and it saves you space on the card that you're recording to. In other words, the data stream is small, and it's easily moved to a slower recording medium, like an SD card. Then there's the edit codec, which is intended to be edited on a desktop machine, not inside the camera. This codec renders each frame fully, so that the computer doesn't need to waste time decompressing each frame on the fly. This takes a lot more space, and requires a faster recording medium, like a Thunderbolt drive or an SSD. Now, some of you are saying, I edit just fine without a Thunderbolt drive or an SSD, and that's true. But you're probably editing the H.264 transferred right from your camera's SD card. And your computer is doing all the heavy lifting to decompress those frames in real time. So the data coming off the hard drive is just like the slow media in your camera. If you're editing in 2K or 4K in a native edit codec, you will definitely need a faster drive. Is it bad to edit this way? Well, yes and no. Yes, because it's much easier on your computer to edit with an edit codec. And no, because it takes a lot of time to convert all your original footage over from H.264 over to Apple ProRes or Avid DNX HR or HD. And that's why most of us don't do it. 80% of our footage is going to end up on the cutting room floor, and there's no reason to transcode all that material and waste all the time and space on your hard drive. But your final product, your final delivery to us, will need to be in the higher resolution and higher data rate. To make this simple this year, I've provided five samples in your team folder, one of each of the five approved turn in formats. Simply drop this clip on your timeline and import your final H.264 export. What I mean by this is that you can edit in H.264 for the entire time and then export your film in its native camera format, like H.264. Then you can convert your film to Apple ProRes or Avid DNX HR or HD in the final stage. The plus side of this kind of delivery is that you don't need to transcode all that extra material and you don't need to export in a different format right away you can stay in what we call camera native. And only the footage you actually used in your final film will be converted to the higher quality. The drawback to this method is scaling. And by this, I mean your film needs to fit in the box. And the scope box is a completely different shape than your original HD film. So you may need to slide certain scenes down to create more headroom, for example. So this requires you to kind of re-edit your film once you've exported it and put it into the new box. Well, it's not a huge deal if you've given yourself enough time to do this. And also, if you were brilliant enough to think about this ahead of time, you could have the scope lines on your viewfinder or on your onset monitor, and you would know exactly what was going to be cut off in the end, thus allowing you to frame your shots perfectly from the beginning. Okay, so let's say you don't want scope. Let's say you want flat. Flat is just slightly wider than HD, so you could simply lose the very top and bottom of your picture and scale it up to fit the screen. Problem solved. Okay, well let's just say you don't want to lose anything. 
Well, then you would turn in in the HD format and it would be pillar boxed. That means that we would add black strips to the edges of your film to fit the format. All right, so you've done your editing, you've exported your final film in your camera native format, like for example H.264, and you've re-imported it and dropped it onto one of the sample resolutions I've given you in your team folder. Now you need to export it again in either Apple ProRes or Avid DNX HR or HD. HD is only for the 1920 by 1080 format. If it's anything higher to 2K or anything else, it needs to be the HR. Hopefully, you've shot in 24 frame. If you've shot in 2997, your picture is going to look quite jittery when you convert it to 24. This final export is what you're going to turn in, and you're going to check it before you get in your car and drive to turn in. And how you check it is really simple. On your Mac or PC, you simply open your final film in QuickTime. If you don't have QuickTime on your PC, just go to Apple, download it for free, and install it. it takes two minutes. Once you open your film in QuickTime, you're going to hit Command-I or Control-I to open up the information window, and then you're going to look at the specifications of your film. First, you're going to check Format. You're going to look for Avid DNX HR or HD or Apple ProRes 422HQ. Any other codec is wrong. Next, you're going to check the resolution. Is it 1920 by 1080 or maybe 1998 by 1080 or one of the three other approved resolutions? There are a total of five approved resolutions. Next, you're going to look at the frame rate. Is it 24 or 2398? You're good to go. 2997, not acceptable. Finally, check your data rate. If your data rate is between 80 and 175 megabits per second, then you're gold. Anything higher is going to waste time exporting, and it's going to waste our time converting it. The theater only screens at around 150 megabits per second. If your data rate is low, under 80, you've probably done something wrong. Maybe you didn't export an Apple ProRes or Avid DNX HR or HD, or maybe you picked the wrong codec, like MPEG-4 or H.264. Finally, you want to test playback of this file. Listen for audio. Look for audio sync issues. Look for jittery frames. And then look at your credits and make sure you didn't forget someone or spell their name wrong. If any of these things are off, do it again. Because we're going to ask you to do it again anyways. The sample I provided you has the right resolutions the right frame rates, and the right codec for Macintosh users. If you match this when you drop it in your timeline, it should solve 90% of your problems. PC users, make sure you use the free Avid codecs and watch the export tutorial video. Some of the problems we've seen in the past are really weird color. Uh, this ended up being due to overexposed footage and Adobe Premiere freaked out about it. We've had issues with uh, audio sync, no audio. Uh, some people submitted in surround. Remember, you can submit in surround, but it needs to be submitted separately so that we can match the left, right, center, etc. So if you did mix in surround audio, make sure you've submitted six audio stems. Some of the other problems we've seen are low data rates and high data rates. These are usually due to the wrong codec or the wrong settings. And of course, several people have forgotten to spell their credits properly, and they wanted to resubmit to correct this issue. Let's get it right the first time, guys. Well, that about covers it. Hope you enjoyed this video.